the Great Barrier Reef, the world's largest coral reef system composed of over 2,900 individual reefs. As avid divers, my wife and I had this on our diving bucket list and finally, when we found ourselves holidaying in Cairns, we made sure that we had the opportunity to thoroughly explore one of the seven wonders of the natural world. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Bernard and welcome to the channel. So if you watched my previous video, you'll know that I'm in Cairns, but if you didn't, well, I'm in Cairns. And when you're here, number one thing that you have to do, of course, is to dive the Great Barrier Reef, and that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm on a dive trip, but this is not just a regular dive trip. I am actually doing a leaf aboard, which means I'll be diving to my heart's content for the next three days and two nights. So without further ado, let's check out the boat. Firstly, we have the sun deck, and this is where we will spend most of our time just chilling and drying off in between dives. Secondly, we have the preparation area where we store our dive gear and where we will gear up right before our dives. Third, we have our dining area, which is also a place you can chill at, but provided you're dry. Last but not least, this is our room. So it's a bunk bed, and as you can see, there's not much space around. So yeah, this is what we'll be living in for the next 3 days, 2 nights. Now, I'm going to go prepare my dive equipment and this camera is going to go into my dive housing. This dive will be our first scuba dive in Australia since we moved here, so needless to say, we were very excited. It wasn't long before we found ourselves swimming towards the world-famous Great Barrier Reef. One of our first sightings is a group of scuba divers there to get their open water certification. I must say that they chose a really cool place to get certified. As we swim along the reef, I get how the place got its name, the Great Barrier Reef. It stretches on for quite a bit and this was only a small part of the entire reef. That is pretty crazy. Despite the high price we paid for this live aboard experience, these dives are not guided. We will get brief on the terrain prior to the dive and you're pretty much on your own after that. Something to note if you're not very confident navigating underwater. Thankfully, I could rely on my wife for that. I don't mind diving on our own as we don't have the pressure of keeping up with or holding back others in a group. But the main downside is that it'll be harder to spot the animals as guides usually know all the best spots to see the local marine life. We also have to be more mindful of our bearings to make sure that we do not get lost so we can't get totally immersed in the environment. The visibility on that day was not perfect, but it was still decent, so enjoy the montage of the remainder of our first dive. The good thing about live aboard dive trips is that in between dives, you typically get better meals and a more comfortable place to rest. Unfortunately for us, the food on this live aboard was subpar. Nothing like anything you would typically get on a live aboard in Asia. After our meals and our surface intervals, we attended the briefing for our next dive. There is also information on all our dive times displayed should you need that. Next, it's on to gearing up for our next dive again. It's pretty much eat, sleep, dive, repeat on such trips. Overall, here are my thoughts on this live aboard experience. The staff and their service is not bad, but neither it is great. It is nothing compared to the level of service you would get in Asian countries. As for the Great Barrier Reef, it is definitely a place to visit and an amazing dive site. However, is it a place where you need to do a live aboard? I say this because my main purpose of doing a live aboard is so that you can have as many dives as possible over the span of a few days 
to increase your chances of spotting rare marine life. With the dives at the Great Barrier Reef, the main marine life you'll be spotting are reef animals. After a while, it gets quite repetitive. Another benefit of doing a live aboard would be to visit as many dive sites as possible. On our trip, I'm not sure if it was because of the water conditions or if it was because the dive company had access only to certain reefs but we were diving the same reef quite a couple of times. Even when we moved to another dive site, it was still a reef dive. After a while, all the reefs looked pretty similar to me. The point I'm trying to make is, I still highly recommend you to dive the Great Barrier Reef because it's amazing. But think twice if you should go for a live aboard. If you had the time and money, why not? But if you are in Cairns for only a limited time or on a limited budget, consider a day dive instead. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. That's pretty much it for today. It's a wrap.